The most popular show on Netflix right now is Dahmer, whose full name is Dahmer Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. There have been at least a dozen other shows and movies about the notorious serial killer, but this one is probably the most expensive and popular because it's on Netflix. Fans are calling Ryan Murphy's Netflix show Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story uncomfortable and f in their first reactions. Starting us off, this new Netflix series has fans disgusted and turning off their TV. The new series starring Evan Peters as the notorious serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer has a synopsis that says, Dahmer shines a light on the untold stories of Dahmer's victims, the people who tried to stop him, and the systemic failures that allowed him to keep killing for over a decade. The show came out on Netflix on September 22nd. Fans shared their thoughts on the show, calling it and disturbing. One person wrote on Twitter, I'm four episodes into Dahmer and I've never felt so uncomfortable while watching a show as I do with this one. His actions were awful and disgusting. Many people liked Peter's performance. One person said the actor is and the other said his work is bone chilling. Someone else tweeted, episode one of Dahmer was f amazing. It's so intense that for 20 minutes you won't remember to breathe. Even Peter's is way too creepy. Carl Franklin gives great direction. Time for episode two. One person said that the Netflix format made it hard for them to watch the 10 episode limited series all at once. I thought I could binge watch any show, but the new Dahmer series on Netflix is giving me trouble, they wrote. Not because it's bad, it's actually very good, but the reenactment in this first episode is a lot and kind of scary. Peter's, Niecy Nash, Richard Jenkins, Michael Learned, Molly Ringwald, Sean J. Brown, and Colin Ford all have roles in the show. Carl Franklin from Mindhunter and Janet Mock from Pose have both directed episodes, and Mock is also a writer for the show. Dahmer is Netflix's biggest premiere since Stranger Things Season 4, however, Dahmer's success could be problematic for Netflix. Less than a week after it came out, Dahmer Monster the Jeffrey Dahmer Story is Netflix's most popular show since the fourth season of Stranger Things. Ryan Murphy, who made American Horror Story, has a five-year deal with the popular streaming service. On September 20th, 21st, the first episode of his new limited series came out. In My Friend Dahmer, which came out in 2017, Evan Peters plays the title character Dahmer. He is the best actor to play the cannibalistic serial killer on screen since Ross Lynch. Monster starts with Dahmer's childhood in Milwaukee and ends with his death in the Columbia Correctional Institution. The Lynch-led film focuses mostly on Dahmer's life in high school before his killing spree. The Netflix limited series is different from other similar projects, though, because it focuses on Dahmer's victims and their families and tries to show them as real people instead of making the villains seem like a hero. The number of people who watched Monster is both surprising and not surprising. Peters is a hugely popular TV star with undeniable talent, so it's interesting to see him play such a notorious person. At the same time, Netflix's true crime shows are very popular, but Monster was not expected to be as popular as Stranger Things and other big hits. Part of this hesitation comes from the fact that there is already a lot of media about Jeffrey Dahmer, which makes Monster seem like a redundant take on a shame time in American history that many people would rather forget. Relatives of the families whose lives Dahmer directly affected while he was alive have already said that the show's portrayal of the gruesome murders has brought back painful memories. So, Monster's success is like a two-edged sword. On the one hand, the number of viewers will keep Netflix interested enough to keep funding true crime shows, but on the other, it's hard to think about the moral implications of bringing back such horrible crimes, and Netflix could be seen as making money off of real tragedies. No matter which side of the fence you think is right, Peter's is interesting as Dahmer and the series is technically well done. And after the first reactions and data are no longer important, only time will tell what kind of legacy Monster leaves behind. Next up, everything the Jeffrey Dahmer show leaves out about the true story. First, Jeffrey Dahmer's childhood. Like the childhoods of other serial killers, Dahmer was hurt and unhappy as a child. In Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, a hernia injury is shown, but Dahmer also had his legs in casts for the first four months of his life and he wore mental illness. His family family moved into the house shown in the series when he was eight years old. This was their third home in two years and their sixth home as a family since their parents got married. Even though things were rough, the Dahmers had another child and Jeffrey got to name his new brother David. Later, after Dahmer was happy to see bones from his house being dug up, Jeffrey would ask his father, Lionel, what would happen if chicken bones were put in bleach. As a chemist, Lionel was happy because he thought this showed how interested Jeffrey was in science. He then showed Jeffrey how to safely treat the animal bones. In addition to the taxidermy techniques shown in Monster the Jeffrey Dahmer story, Jeffrey would also use these techniques to keep his human victims alive. When Dahmer was 13, he nailed the body of a dog to a tree and stuck the dog's head on a stick. He then told his schoolmates to come look at what he had found. From the time he was 14 years old on, Dahmer would often drink at school. He often kept bottles of alcohol, which he called his medicine, in an army surplus jacket, which reminded me of Peter's famous 
role as Tate Langdon in American Horror Story. Dahmer didn't do well in school, but he had a very high IQ and loved to play tennis. The True Brutality of Jeffrey Dahmer's Crimes Dahmer started putting his victims to sleep because he didn't like it when they moved around during wanted to see them as things. Dahmer tried to make a loving love slave out of one of his victims by making them unable to move. Errol Lindsay was Dahmer's 11th victim and it was on him that he first used what he called his drilling technique after giving his victims Dahmer drilled a hole in their heads and injected them with a mixture of acid and hot water in the frontal lobe. Some people were able to get through it, but Dahmer would still kill them later. During the show, Jeffrey calls Lindsay's family and tells them to stop looking for him. In real life, Dahmer made calls like this to the families of many of the people he killed. Tony Hughes, a deaf aspiring model who was the next person Dahmer killed, was the second person he used his drilling technique on. He was shown in episode 6, Silenced. When Conorak sent the phone 14 was brought back to Dahmer's house, police officers quickly checked his apartment, and when they did, they found Hughes's dead body lying on the floor. Hughes's foot was briefly seen in episode 2, Please Don't Let Go, which was about Cynthia Symphone's sad death. Finally, Jeffrey Dahmer's House of Horrors. Many of the true crime shows on Netflix like I Just Killed My Dad have a lot of gory details, but the long list of body parts that were taken from Dahmer's house was especially horrible. Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, by the way, used real news archive footage that showed the removal of human remains to show what happened. The hazardous materials team did this, but they were not police officers. Instead, they were a company hired from the outside. The men who famously carried the blue barrel down the stairs were only 18 years old at the time. This is proof that Dahmer's actions caused more pain in his community. Inside Dahmer's apartment, police found an altar he was making for himself. He said he was doing it so he could feel at home. Two full skeletons were used to crack the skulls of seven of Dahmer's victims. He planned to put these skulls across the table where he took pictures of their bodies. Dahmer wanted to add the heads of the four people whose heads had been cut off and were found in his refrigerator when he was caught. Dahmer was looking for a total of 12 schools, but he only had 11 so far from his 17 victims. The worst part of Jeffrey Dahmer's story is that it could have been a stop. After he was charged with assault, Dahmer was given a parole officer who was supposed to check on him twice a month, but never did. On the night Synthesim phone was given back to Dahmer, other emergency services were there and thought he needed medical help, but the Milwaukee Police Department told them they were wrong. Many of the tragedies that happened after Jeffrey Dahmer's crimes could have been prevented. Unfortunately, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and until next time.